Today, I'm going to be talking about extending the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge within the Annotator for Clinical Data Configuration Editor. During this video, I will use the terms Annotator for Clinical Data Configuration Editor and Config Editor interchangeably. Within the Annotator for Clinical Data Configuration Editor, we have the option of extending a cartridge. This gives us the ability to reuse the assets available within that cartridge while also expanding upon those assets for a particular use case. By extending the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge specifically, we will have available to us a wealth of pre-built assets that can be used to produce insights from unstructured clinical documents. Included with these assets are machine learning models. At this point in time, those models are focused in the areas of medication, diagnosis, procedures, and normality, but that could always be expanded in the future. When analyzing the text, this cartridge answers the basic question, is the information in the document relevant to the patient? Continuing with the demo, here I am at the main page of the Annotator for Clinical Data Configuration Editor, where you can see a list of cartridges that are currently available to me. Included in the list is the IBM Clinical Insights V1.0 cartridge. This is a specific published version, version 1.0, of the IBM Clinical In Insights cartridge that I've imported into the config editor. Selecting this cartridge in the right panel, I have a try it out and a delete option, and I can see the list of artifacts contained within this imported cartridge. Clicking try it out, and then clicking the run button, I can see this cartridge in action. Along the right panel, I can view a summary of the findings, the annotations that were discovered within my document. I can also view and explore the cartridge artifacts. Taking a quick look at the artifacts, you see here it includes a clinical attribute set, some concept dictionaries, some care insight dictionaries, a set of drive concepts, some filters, and the four insight models. I can further explore these read-only artifacts within the cartridge. For example, selecting IBM Clinical Insights Drive Concepts. I am presented with information about the artifact, such as the owner, the creation and last updated dates, and any references to this artifact. I will go ahead and click Open to view the Drive Concepts in more detail. The Drive Concepts in the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge is a set of rules where the concepts discovered in the text are examined against a subset of UMLS types that are of interest to this cartridge. These are the candidates that result in one of the four following clinical insights types to get promoted when analyzing the text. Those types being IC medication, IC procedure, IC diagnosis, and IC normality. The IC in this case is short for Insights Cartridge. Opening an entry in the list, again, this is a read-only view. Here in the selection section, this rule will match on any concepts discovered in the text that are of the type UMLS Laboratory Procedure. And at the top, we can see that this match will result in a concept being promoted with the type IC Procedure. Moving on, selecting the IBM Clinical Insights Attributes V1.0, you again see details about the artifact, and I'll go ahead and click Open to explore this attribute set in more detail. Here, you see this particular attribute set contains clinical attributes related to notes that you would find in a patient report. I can click the icon to open one of the attributes. The description tells me that this attribute is associated with the patient's future diagnostic procedures. Expanding the values section and looking at the annotations, this says if there's a procedure annotation that is generated with these features, validity not equal to invalid, pending is greater than or equal to 0.7, diagnostic task is greater than or equal to 0.6, or there is a concept annotation with a type equal to IC procedure, validity not equal to invalid, pending is greater than or equal to 0.7, and diagnostic task is greater than or equal to 0.6. When this criteria is met, this attribute will be promoted. Note how this attribute builds on the concept type, IC procedure, which we saw when we looked at the drive concepts for this cartridge. So, 
Next, we will look at how we can take advantage of the assets and features of the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge while also building upon or customizing those features for our particular use case. When I click Extend in the upper right, it's going to prompt me to fill in the information for creating my new cartridge. I will name it Demo Extend Clinical Insights. It has automatically filled in the owner and email for me. I could optionally add a description, change the authorization levels, add any additional artifacts, and note it has automatically added IBM Clinical Insights B1.0 as a cartridge dependency. I can click this checkbox here and that will copy over the preferred flow from the cartridge dependency to my cartridge. I can optionally add any tags and I'll go ahead and click create. This will create a new cartridge that extends the IBM Clinical Insights V1.0 and takes me to the new cartridge's preview tryout mode. I will copy in text from the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge and I will use the preferred flow. At this point, because I have not made any modifications, my new cartridge will behave just like the Admin Clinical Insights V1.0 cartridge and return the same set of annotations. If we examine the findings in more detail, we can see the list of concepts that were generated, including the Clinical Insights derived concepts, IC Diagnosis, IC Medication, IC Normality, and IC Procedure. If I go to the Show dropdown, I'm going to deselect everything so we can focus in on these IC concepts. If I select IC Diagnosis, you can now see underlying the spans of text that resulted in an IC, IC Diagnosis concept being promoted. Selecting one of these, Abdominal Discomfort, you see here that it triggered a patient reported condition attribute and that came out of our attribute set we looked at previously. An ACI symptom disease indication annotation was triggered. And here's our IC diagnosis concept that was triggered that came out of the derived concepts that we looked at earlier. And lastly, there was a UMLS sign or symptom concept that was triggered. I'll go ahead and deselect the concepts. And taking a quick glance at the clinical attributes that were promoted, you notice things such as abnormal finding, diagnosis, diagnostic procedure, etc. Now I want to start customizing my cartridge to build on the IBM Clinical Insights assets. Note in the upper right that there is both an Extend button and an Edit button now. I will begin editing my cartridge. I am presented with a list of all the assets in my new cartridge in the main panel. Note the Cartridge Artifacts section is empty because I have not explicitly added any artifacts. However, there is a Dependency section labeled From IBM Clinical Insights V1.0, and there you can see the list of artifacts that are available to my new cartridge as a result of extending this cartridge. I can explore any of the artifacts listed here in the Dependency section. As we saw previously with the IBM Clinical Insights V1.0 cartridge, this is a read-only view when exploring these dependency artifacts. Let's go on ahead and extend the IBM Clinical Insights Attribute Set. Using the Add drop-down, I select New Clinical Attribute Set. I will give it a, a name. Demo Extend CI Attributes. And note it has automatically filled in the owner, the authorizations, and for the purposes of this demo, note there is an extend an existing attribute set. We want to go ahead and select that, and as we start typing, type ahead will present us with, with a list of matching options. So we'll go ahead and select the IBM Clinical Insight Attributes V1.0, and then we'll go ahead and click Create. Note that in my cartridge artifact list, there now appears in the cartridge artifacts section the new attribute set that we just created. I'll go ahead and open my new clinical attribute set and note that there are no attributes shown. By default, only the attributes that I have created in the set will be displayed. However, I can click the show drop down and when I select base set attributes, 
I can now see attributes from the attribute set that I have extended. These attributes have a light gray background to differentiate these attributes, the ones I'm inheriting from the extended set, versus any attributes that I may create in my set. Selecting one of these, I can explore the attribute. Note the gray box that is positioned over the attribute fields. This tells me that I'm looking at a reference to this attribute because this attribute exists only in the base set. Note the red override button. When I click that, the gray box disappears. I now have the ability within the context of my cartridge to modify this attribute. I'll use a simple example. Let's say for my use case, I'm not interested in conditions that are reported by the patient. Perhaps in the context of my cartridge, I don't consider those conditions trustworthy or interesting. I will check the box to disable this attribute, and then I'll go ahead and click Create. Note in the list that the attribute now has a white background, which means the attribute is now in my attribute set and it is editable. The light gray text signifies that this attribute is currently disabled. I will go ahead and click Preview. Because I am in edit mode for my cartridge, I will copy in text that is similar to the text we've been using in today's demo, and this time I will save the text to my cartridge so I have it for future reference. I'm going to click Run, and note, by disabling the patient reported condition attribute, it is no longer firing over the span of text abdominal discomfort. Also note that it is no longer listed in the findings for this cartridge. Another example where I have the ability to customize the attributes in the context of my cartridge is by adjusting the thresholds that are set in the IBM Clinical Insights attributes. When you explore the attributes in the base set, you will notice one or more confidence score thresholds that must be met before a given attribute will fire. For example, in the Medication Adverse Event attribute, if I expand the Values section, I can see the criteria that must be met. For any medication annotations that are discovered, those annotations must have an adverse score greater than or equal to 0.6, an adverse discussed score, less than 0.4, etc. Or, for any concept annotations, these are the different thresholds that must be met before a medication adverse event will be promoted. As you are building up your cartridge, you may find that these thresholds need to be tuned to your scenario. For example, if I go back to Preview, I'm going to deselect everything here get rid of some of the extra noise. And then if we focus in on diagnosis, the diagnosis attribute, here if we look at the span of text diabetes, you can see the different scores, confidence scores, for this particular span of text. Likewise, for fracture of his left hip, you can see the set of scores, confidence scores, that were tied to this span of text. Examining these scores is how I can determine what I may need to adjust in the attribute thresholds for my particular use case. The same way that I demonstrated how I was able to disable the patient reported condition attribute, I am able to use the override feature if I find that I need to adjust the clinical insights thresholds or any other aspects of the attributes in the base set. I will next demonstrate how I can create and add my own attributes to this set. Going back to preview, this time I'm going to focus in on the sections, which fall under the contextual category. Note in the family history section, there were no IBM Clinical Insight annotations discovered. Because Clinical Insights, at this point in time, is focused on information in the text that is directly relevant to the patient, it's not as interested in information about the patient's family history. Note in the family history section, we see mention of his father having a heart attack. In my scenario, this could be information that I am interested in. That's where I can expand on the assets available in the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge by adding a new attribute to my set. If I go back to my attribute set, I can start from scratch with creating a new attribute by clicking the plus icon, 
Alternatively, I will use the copy option to copy from an existing attribute in the set. I will use the attribute potential diagnosis. I click the three dots to the left of the attribute name and select copy. I will go ahead and enter family history condition and click create. Note that this attribute also has a white background. This tells me that this attribute is in my set and it is editable. Opening this attribute, I will first edit the description. Next, I will click the value section that was copied over to my new attribute. As currently set, this attribute will fire on any symptom disease annotation that has the following features or any concept annotation that has these features. I will first modify the symptom disease match criteria. I will keep the validity check. I'm going to remove the diagnosis su suspected check and the diagnosis patient reported check. With their attribute, they were looking for a low family history score because this was not of interest to their cartridge. However, because I am interested in family history, I want to match on a high confidence score, so I will set this to a value of greater than or equal to 0.8. Moving on to the concept annotation, I will keep the type as IC diagnosis. I will keep the validity check. And same as above, I will remove the suspected and patient reported checks. And for the family history, I also want to set this to a value of greater than or equal to 0.8. I'll go ahead and save my new attribute. Now if I go back to preview and click run, you see my family history condition attribute has been promoted and the text heart attack has been annotated. This was based off our modifications to the cartridge. So this is an example of how I was able to expand upon IBM Clinical Insights within the context of my cartridge by adding my own attribute that uses the insights from the Clinical Insights model. Moving on, when we examined the derived concepts within the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge, I mentioned that these rules define the candidates that were responsible for generating concepts with the type IC medication, IC diagnosis, IC procedure, or IC normality, and that these IC concepts confidence scores were examined to determine if they met the thresholds laid out in the Clinical Insights attribute set. In the list, we see in the description column that the rules are looking specifically for certain UMLS types, such as pharmacologic substance, sign or symptom, body location or region, etc. What if in our scenario, we want to add to the list of candidates responsible for generating one of these IC concepts? From preview, let's focus on the two attributes, abnormal finding and normal finding. These are examples of two attributes that use a confidence scores in the IC normality concept. We can look at the span of text responsible for generating these attributes. In the normal finding attribute, we have PIP structure, for example. Here we see his hip looks good in the latest x-ray. So Clinical Insights was able to determine that this was a normal finding. Note in the sentence is also the text, his gait is normal, and that span of text is not currently being annotated. If we look at the cartridge artifacts, there is a list of filters, and specifically a filter called IBM Clinical Insights UMLS Filter V1.0. 
This contains UMLS types for concepts that the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge is filtering out. These are types that are considered to be either irrelevant to medication, diagnoses, procedures, and normality, or they are types that are considered to be too noisy. The span of text, his gait is normal, falls under the UMLS finding type. In general, UMLS finding concepts can be very noisy when annotating the text, so we don't want to include that type by default. In our scenario, we may consider as gait is normal to be important. We want the span of text to be, reflect a normal finding about the patient. Let's look at how we can expand the IC normality concept within the context of our cartridge. In the lower right, I can go ahead and add my own set of derived concepts to my cartridge by clicking Create New Artifact. It will prompt me to enter a name for my new derived concepts. And I'll go ahead and keep the defaults for the other fields and click Create. You will now see Demo Extend CI Drive Concepts in My Cartridge Artifacts list in the right panel, and I'll go ahead and open that. What I need to do now is expand on the set of rules that promote the IC normality concept. In this set, I will add my own rule that will cause an IC normality concept to fire. In the output section, I want to set the type to IC normality. And for the CUI and the preferred name, I want those features to be detected from the UMLS concept that matches this rule. Moving to the selection section, I will leave the annotation to concept. For the match field, I want to search by concept identifier. Recall in the set of IBM Clinical Insights Drive concepts that those rules were all looking for specific UMLS types. Since the type UMLS finding can be noisy, and UMLS finding is currently being filtered in the cartridge, we don't want to use type for our match field. Instead, we create our rule to look at the concept identifier. For the value field, I will enter the word gate, and I will select that CUI. I'll go ahead and save my new derived concept, and I'll go run preview. Note in our sentence that his gait is normal is now being annotated. Looking here in our list of attributes under normal finding, gait now appears in the list. And if we go back and hide the clinical attributes and hide the concepts and focus in on IC normality, we would see gait is now being annotated as an IC normality type. So this is an example of how we were able to add to the list of candidates that causes the Clinical Insights IC concepts to get promoted. The last thing I want to mention related to customizing the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge in the context of your cartridge is looking at the list of artifacts. We could, for example, add our own dictionary to the list. We could add our own filter. We can even disable any of the artifacts in the list. This is useful if we determine, for our scenario, that we don't want their artifact included. Clicking the Cartridge tab and in the main panel is the list of cartridge artifacts. I can choose to disable any of these artifacts by clicking the three dots that appear next to the artifact's name. I'll go ahead and disable one of the filters. I am prompted to confirm my selection. I'll go ahead and click Disable. And note how this artifact appears in the main panel with a light gray font. Also in the right panel, if I look at the cartridge tab, you'll notice here too that the artifact is listed in light gray. If I go back and run preview at this point, what you'll see is a list of UMLS types that were once being filtered are now shown. For example, if I focus in on the concepts, previously finding was being filtered. If I go ahead and select that, you can see all the different places that finding is now being annotated in our text. In summary, you have the ability to adjust various pieces of the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge for your scenario. 
we have seen examples of how we were able to take advantage of the wealth of assets contained within the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge by extending that cartridge. Then, within the context of our cartridge, we were able to expand on the functionality and customize that functionality of the IBM Clinical Insights cartridge for our use case. This concludes the video.